Today on Sports Card Investor, some incredible data that's going to blow your mind and show you where some investing opportunities lie. My name is Jeff Wilson. By day, I invest in tech companies, and at night, I invest in sports cards. Join me on my journey to profit from the hobby we all love. Sports card investors, and welcome to another episode. Oh boy, do we have some good stuff to go over today. I am excited to show you some more numbers, some new numbers that I have just pulled from my Market Movers data system that you're going to love and that are going to give you some areas to look at in terms of investments. I got some good stuff to share with you today. And I am also excited that we have some great sponsors and speakers and great giveaways that are going to be taking place during our virtual sports card con 2020, which is now less than two weeks away. And I am happy to announce that the first night of the virtual sports card con Wednesday, July the 29th, is going to be StockX night and StockX is going to be giving away a free break to people watching. We're going to pick random people watching and give away a totally free break. It's going to be awesome. There's going to be other giveaways and special deals that night as well as other nights of the virtual sports card con. And we have some very special guests who will be joining. I'm excited that I'm going to be doing an interview with uh, Dr. James Beckett, as in Beckett. Beckett, you know, Beckett, right? Beckett Magazine, Beckett Grading, the guy who founded all of it. Dr. Dr. James Beckett's going to be joining for an exclusive interview. We have so many special guests and surprises up our sleeves. It's going to be an exciting event. If you have not registered for the Virtual Sports Card Con 2020 yet, go to sportscardinvestor.com and click on Virtual 2020 in the main menu bar and make sure to subscribe to this channel on YouTube right now and hit the little bell icon so you can get notified when we go live every night starting Wednesday, July 29th. Okay, guys, I am excited about some of the new things. I'm really excited about some of the new things that we've launched in Market Movers over the last month. Our pace of innovation has been absolutely incredible. You've heard me in past episodes talk about this dashboard feature that we've launched where when you go into Market Movers, you can now customize a dashboard of all of your favorite players who you're watching and you want to see what they're doing, what the last sale is in the last seven days, 30 days, etc. And I've also last week announced that we had just launched the My Collection feature where you could input your own collection into Market Movers and every single day, Market Movers will tell you how your collection is changing in value and what your profit and loss is looking like. These are awesome new things we've added into Market Movers. But what I'm going to show you today is the next new thing. And ooh, is it providing some really good investment information. This is brand new. I just launched this live. You guys are seeing this for the very first time. And we're going to talk about some of the data that's coming out of here and what this means to you as a sports card investor. So let's take a look at this. So I'm going to go into an area of market movers that's existed for a while, but has not been used very heavily. It's called the set and year charts. And the thing that's really cool about the set and year charts is you can compare an entire rookie class across a particular set. So let's say, for example, we're going to take basketball to start. And we're going to take 2018 basketball, right? Uh, very good rookie class, popular rookie class. And let's use prism and let's use base and silver of prism for this comparison in PSA 10. And so we're going to do our search and it's going to show us a graph. And the graph is, it's going to take a minute to load here because there's so many different cards that are going to show up on this graph. And here it is. Um, but this is the graph of all of those rookies from the 2018 class that we're tracking in Market Movers. And we're obviously tracking a ton, a ton of different 2018 rookies and all of their base and silver cards. And of course, the graph looks very crazy because we just added all of these cards to the graph. But here's where the magic is about to happen. 
There's a new tab right below the graph now in Market Movers. It's called Ratios. And here's what Ratios is going to do. Since we searched for all of these players' silvers and their base cards in PSA 10s, it's going to automatically calculate the ratio of silver to base for each of these players. And by looking at this, you instantly start to get some really insightful information. For example, by looking down the ratio column, you will notice that the two players that have the largest ratio between silver and base in PSA 10 in the 2018 basketball draft class are Trey Young with a 4.97 ratio. That means that his silver card at $1,589 is 4.97 times more valuable than his base card, which most recently sold for $320. Second is Luca. Luca's silver at $4,099 is 4.48 times more valuable than his base card at $915. But what's interesting is as you start to look down the list, you've got Shea Gilgis Alexander at 3.21. That's a pretty big number. But then as you get down into someone like Jaron Jackson, it's only a 2.32 difference between his silver, which last sold for $360, and his base that last sold for $155. Or you have a Landry Shamit, who's only a 1.78 difference, or a Mitchell Robinson, who's a 1.83 difference between his silver and his base. Now, if you look at cards across market movers, you will see that the phenomenon that is occurring here with these 2018 rookies is not unique. You will find that the players, as they become bigger and bigger stars, that the differential between their base cards and some of their premium, you know, some of their premium parallels and refractors and that type of thing, like the silver card is, starts to separate wider and wider. And that's why you've got uh, Trey Young and Luka Doncic as the only two players with above a 4X separation between their silver and their base, while all of the other players are underneath that. But what this data also tells me is that if any of these other players start to gain popularity, you're going to see their silver accelerate more quickly than their base. And for a player like, for example, Jaron Jackson Jr., whose silver as of the last sale was only 2.32 times more than his base, that tells me that this is an opportunity to buy a Jaron Jackson Jr. silver, that the differential is not great enough. If you can find a silver for anywhere around that price point or even fairly close to it, the differential tells me that if Jaron Jackson goes on to become a bigger and bigger name player, that that silver will likely accelerate more quickly than the base because that's what we've seen with Luca and Trey. Now, on the flip side, you could argue that maybe there's some value in Trey Young's base cards right now. The fact that Trey Young's silvers are 4.97 times more than his base cards, which is the highest on this list, even significantly higher than Luca who's 4.48 times more valuable, that tells me that this base card of Trey Young at $320 is actually perhaps a pretty good value compared to his silver card at $1,589. Pretty interesting stuff. You guys want to see more? We can look at some more. What if we did the same thing comparing grades to each other? Would that be pretty cool to look at the ratio between PSA 10s and BGS 9.5s and PSA 9s? Because we can make that happen too. You want to see that? All right. So let's take a look at the 2019 basketball rookie class. And this time we are going to, we're going to look at Prism. This time we're just going to look at Prism base cards because what we want to do is we want to compare grades. So in this case, we're going to compare a PSA 10 to PSA 9 of the 2019 rookie classes base cards to see what those look like. And so instead of, again, instead of comparing variations like we did last time, looking at base cards to silver cards in the same grade, now we're going to look at the same type of card, the base card, but going from a PSA 10 to a PSA 9. And so this graph that just loaded on your screen, again, a, 
a messy graph here because there's so many different players that are part of the 2019 rookie class that we're tracking within market movers. Uh, but what we wanna look at is we wanna look at the ratios. We wanna go down here to this ratio section and we wanna look at what Kevin Porter Jr.'s 2019 PRISM base in PSA 10 is compared to PSA 9. And we wanna see that that is a 3.9 ratio. So his PSA 10 is 3.9 times more valuable than his PSA 9. Now, LeBron, who's we're tracking in the system, not a rookie, obviously, this is just his 2019 base, 3.08 times more valuable, going from a 10 to a nine. Um, a couple that stand out here to me, you've got Kobe White right now and Cam Reddish, whose cards are, are just over four times more valuable looking at recent sales between a 10 and a nine. And then on the flip side, you've got someone like Ja Morant, who is only 2.98 times more valuable looking at recent sales between a 10 and a nine. So what this tells me is that going above four as a differential here, we've got some value currently in the Kobe White PSA 9 and the Cam Reddish PSA 9 because their PSA 10s have gone up considerably in price. And if you go back and look at the graph of these two players, they've both seen price increases pretty significantly over the last 60 days. But most of those price increases have come in the forms of their PSA 10s. Their PSA 9s have still languished behind in terms of prices. And that's why the PSA 10 has started to split off from the PSA 9. And you're seeing now a differential between the two that is over 4X. Whereas with someone like Ja Morant, the differential is just below 3X. So his PSA 9s are more appropriately priced compared to his PSA 10s. Or you could even make the argument that maybe his PSA 10s are a little bit underpriced compared to his PSA 9s. So this is a real interesting way to look at these ratios as well. And of course, now within market movers, I can compare PSA 10 to BGS 9.5. I can compare P PSA 10 to BGS 10 Pristine. I can look at SGC 10 and compare that to PSA 10 and PSA 9 and BGS 9.5 for the cards that we have SGC 10 data on. So there's a lot of different interesting conclusions you can derive by looking at the ratios of card values and seeing where there may be some inefficiencies in the marketplace for you to take advantage of. We'll look at one more example. We're gonna go over here to the popular card charts in Market Movers, and we're going to, let's call up some of the popular baseball players from the 2018 baseball rookie class. So you can do these same types of comparisons on the popular card charts within Market Movers. Let's look at Juan Soto, and let's look at Glaber Torres, and let's look at Shohei Otani, because these are three guys who are all from the 2018 rookie class, all of whom are expected to make some noise this year and could be really interesting players to look at this year. Let's look at their 2018 Topps Chrome Update baseball cards. And we're just gonna look at their base cards, even though you could do a comparison of their base cards to their refractors and their refractor autos and all that kind of stuff. But in this case, I wanna look at their base cards. Uh, let me just look at a great comparison. Let's take a look at their PSA 10s and their BGS 9.5s, just out of, out of uh, comparison to see what that looks like for these three guys. So that's gonna load and we are, so you see all of those on your screen here. Let's go and look at the ratios, the ratio differences between these three. So there's actually a pretty fair spread between these three players. We see that the difference between Shohei Otani's PSA 10 to his BGS 9.5, is a 1.88 times ratio. So he's $152 on his PSA 10 and $81 on his BGS 9.5. Um, we see that Juan Soto is a lower differential, a 1.54, and Glaber Torres is a significantly higher differential at 2.82. Now, Glaber Torres is the least expensive of these three players in terms of this particular card. Um, but I think that the fact that there's such a difference between his PSA 10 and his BGS 9.5 indicates to me that there's some value potentially to be had with his BGS 9.5. Now, oftentimes with players that are a little bit lesser expensive, you will see a little bit more of a differential between the PSA 10 
and some of the lower grades occur. So, and, and his cards are a little lesser expensive. His his cards, his PSA 10s are only around $79, whereas Juan Soto is up at about 133 and Shohei Otani is up at about 152. So that explains that difference a little bit. But nonetheless, the fact that I could get a BGS 9.5 for 2.82 times less than his PSA 10, where with these other players, it would be it would be in the one times, you know, one to two times range as opposed to the two to three times range. I like that. And if I'm buying Glaber Torres cards right now, I would seriously consider the value that I could get from that BGS 9.5 compared to uh, what I could potentially get with a PSA 10. Not to mention that if that card ever became particularly valuable, maybe there's the opportunity to try to cross that BGS 9.5 over to a PSA 10. That's another strategy. Another strategy that you could use with these ratios is to go through the system and look for cards where the BGS 9.5s are significantly less valuable from a ratio perspective than the PSA 10s, than what you might otherwise think that they should be. Then perhaps not only do the BGS 9.5s present a good value for you to buy then with a good opportunity for appreciation, but then perhaps they also provide the opportunity for you to eventually cross them over to a PSA 10 if those cards continue as a whole to rise in value. So a lot of opportunity to use this new ratios feature to go value hunting and to find some opportunities for cards that may appreciate more quickly than the market going forward. All right, guys, if you would be interested in trying out this new feature and trying out market movers, I'm offering a special coupon right now that gives you 20% off your first payment for market movers, whether it's monthly or annual, you save 20% your first payment by using coupon code collection. And that is the coupon code we put out because of the uh, debut of the new My Collection feature last week. And that coupon code will also continue to work if you want to come in and use the ratios feature as well. Because you get the entire system for 20% off your first payment with coupon code COLLECTION. To sign up for Market Movers, go to sportscardinvestor.com and click on the membership link in the main menu bar. What data would you like me to show you next? Because guys, as you can see, I am trying to change the game in the sports card hobby by creating data and analytics that nobody has been able to compile this way before. This is game-changing stuff, and this is just the beginning. I have a whole roadmap and an entire development team working around the clock, literally around the clock, because I've, I've got international developers working on it as well, uh, working on this around the clock to make this data even better and even more comprehensive and to give you insights into the hobby and the statistics like you've never seen before. If you have some ideas for me of things you would love to see in Market Movers and would love to see me feature on future episodes, leave them in the comments on my YouTube below. And please guys, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, hit the bell icon because you're gonna wanna know about the virtual Sports Card Con 2020 when we go live in less than two weeks and go to sportscardinvestor.com and click on the virtual 2020 to register for that as well. It is completely free, completely free to attend, completely free. You guys want to be part of that for sure. Thank you so much. I hope you're having a wonderful week out there and I'll see you back soon for my next episode. Take care.